lashes for being gay. Another vivid example today of what can happen to gay people in parts of Africa. This particular punishment was in Nigeria, where a few weeks ago, the government quietly signed anti-homosexuality legislation, which means long jail sentences for same-sex couples and even for going to a gay club. You might say that's a matter for them, except David Cameron once justified the amount of aid Britain gives to Nigeria by saying he'd use it to influence same-sex policies there. Gabriel Gatehouse reports. The bill was signed into law quietly earlier this month without fanfare or announcement. When the news came out this week, it was relegated to a small corner of the national press. But it's a piece of legislation that will have a huge impact on the lives of gay people in Nigeria. Gay sex is already illegal, but this act goes further. It recommends prison sentences of up to 14 years for same-sex couples. Public displays of affection or even going to a gay club could land you in jail for a decade. It's a populist and almost universally popular move from a president under intense political pressure at home and facing re-election next year. It's on African. We don't want something in our country. I'm so happy that he signed against it. It's better that we have such a law in place than to have situations where people would take the laws into their hand on account of saying, oh, someone is suspected to be homosexual, and then jungle justice obtains. Since the announcement of the signing of the bill, dozens of people have been arrested in this staunchly religious and conservative country. The police will arrest people and go through their telephone and ask them to identify who is gay on their telephone number, get the number and give this person a call and invite them over. They go to the police station, they get arrested and this system keeps going on. BC Alimi, who fled to the UK in 2007 after coming out live on Nigerian TV, says he and his family have been receiving death threats on social media. In a country like Nigeria, where mob justice is, is the biggest in the world, I fear for my family, I fear for my friends, and um, I, I, just, I just fear for every ordinary um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender people in Nigeria. I feel one is in self-denial, total self-denial. Being gay in Nigeria isn't easy. In a recent poll, 98% of respondents said homosexuality was unacceptable in society. Meetings are held in secret. Activists must conceal their identities. Nigeria is Africa's most populous country. Despite its vast oil wealth, it's also one of the continent's poorest, where more than half the population survive on less than one pound a day. British aid to Nigeria has almost doubled in five years. In 2010 to 11, DFID gave 143 million pounds. By the end of next financial year, that figure's projected to have risen to 275 million. Nigeria is just one of many African states with anti-gay legislation on the statute books. Consensual same-sex relationships are illegal in around two-thirds of countries on the continent. They include Ethiopia, which last year received over £260 million from DFID, Tanzania at £150 million, and South Sudan at just under £110 million are also amongst the top recipients of UK aid money. Right Honourable David Cameron. In 2011, David Cameron said Britain would use aid to try to influence government policy on same-sex relationships in countries like Nigeria. Britain is now one of the premier aid givers in the world, saying that our aid, actually, we want to see countries that receive our aid adhering to proper human rights, and that includes how people treat uh, uh, gay and lesbian people. The Foreign Secretary said he was disappointed with the signing of the bill and that Britain frequently raises its concerns over gay rights, both with Nigeria and other countries. But clearly, the aid money has continued to be forthcoming. And some activists say that British policy of public rebukes and sabre-rattling over aid is both ineffectual and counterproductive. 
we can see the backlash from that, not just in Nigeria, but from Uganda, from Zimbabwe, from Zambia, from all over Africa. African leaders standing up and saying, Britain, you're coming back again to colonize us with your money. We don't want your money. Take your money away. After David Cameron made the statement about aid conditionality tied to LGBT rights, I wrote an email to the Foreign Office um, using the Freedom of Information Act to demand for Britain's investment in supporting grassroots LGBT organisation. No investment whatsoever. Britain's £10 billion foreign aid budget is meant in part to project soft power abroad. Nigerians, both in the gay community and in government, could be forgiven for thinking that all the tough talk doesn't really mean very much.